Well, hello. Hello, hello. Look at this fuzzy little thing. I've decided I'm going to paint a caterpillar. I don't know why, but this one just struck my fancy. <laughs> just so cute. And I know we are getting into caterpillar season. They're going to be turning into butterflies laying their eggs. And fall's coming. And I really honestly don't know what is what with caterpillars. <laughs> I don't know when they lay their eggs. I know I've seen caterpillars. I know that they're, they're gone and they're back again. But long story short, I'm not going to go into caterpillars. I just thought this one was cute and my artistic side decided that it wanted to paint it. So I'm sketching it in. I'm actually using the hot press paper for this and I don't normally use hot press. So this was a little test to see how that was going to turn out. I'm, I am doing a lot of little layers on here, a lot of glazing and um, it's just fun, fun little, fun little uh, painting to do. I decided I'm going to use for all that little white, those little fine hairs and lines. I'm going to grab my calligraphy pen for that and use some masking fluid. I'm going to see how that's going to work for all those little white spaces, those little fine hairs. If anybody knows what kind of caterpillar this is, let me know because I'm really not sure. I don't, I don't think we have these here in Maine. Probably could do one of those Google searches for that. So there's this little wormy shape here. <laughs> not, not much to them, is it? I don't know why I'm struggling so much trying to sketch this in, but I wanted to get like the little stripes along the back and uh, where his little body divides up. And um, then we'll get the little hairs in there. So that's pretty much it. I think I'm going to, I'm going to be done. Now that I've got my little worm body down in here, <laughs> I'm going to use my calligraphy pen along with some masking fluid to get those little tiny hairs in. Now, I know that tons of people use little fine brushes for this. Um, there are little tools that you can use just for masking fluid, which I do like my tools as well. Um, and I've used that on a couple of different videos, but I always tend to go back to my little calligraphy pen. I just like the way it feels in my hand. It's really easy to hold and it actually holds quite a bit of masking. As you can see here, I'm just going through and just printing all those little tiny hairs and it's small enough. If I turn it sideways, you know, like with calligraphy, cause I, I cannot, cannot do calligraphy. That's one of the things I bought this thing for, I know I was going to go do all of this calligraphy pen work. Cause I've always wanted to be able to write in calligraphy and I've always been a horrible writer. I look like when, when I signed my, artwork. It's like a doctor's signature. It's like the scribble. And I've just never had the patience for this beautiful hand lettering. <laughs> so I bought this whole thing with a couple of different colored inks and stuff that came with it. And I never used it. I tried. I um, used it a couple of times and I was like, oh, I got to take a calligraphy course one of these days. So I just use it for masking. I love it for masking. And it's got, I think it came with five different little nibs with this one. So um, you can do different sizes. So this one, I think is a really, the really small one that they have in there, but look at all this little detail stuff I do with this. I absolutely love this thing. This is my, this is my tool. It's one of my favorite tools. And you know, if you've been following for a while, I don't often mask out a lot of work unless I'm doing like animals or something like this. Cause if I'm painting seascapes, landscapes, stuff like that, I pretty much just use white gouache and, uh, don't leave the white of the paper half the time. But for this guy, whiskers, hairs, things like that, you definitely really need to use a masking fluid. So now I'm going to switch over to my Zen Art brush. This is a square brush. Again, another brush I don't often use. For some reason, when I started painting, I only used two brushes for like the first five years of my painting life. And it was a oval wash brush, like a three quarter inch to a one inch and a little detail brush that came with my Windsor Noon kit. A little tiny fine point brush for all my details. So I use those two brushes and I taught classes that way about, I don't know, three or four years later with my mom. And it was just easier because you don't have to have all of these brushes and it was, you know, so expensive and 
when we started doing our home parties and things, it was like, ah, uh, well, we'll just, you know, this is what I've been using this whole time. I don't need all of these, you know, a fan brush, a rigor brush, a um, cat tongue. I mean, there's just so many brushes and people can go broke just by buying brushes. So I just used a couple of brushes. And if you're just starting out and you're a beginner, just use a couple of brushes. Don't get all crazy about all of the, I mean, it's nice. It's fun. When you go to Amazon, you find all of these little new tools that you're, you, that you can use. But, you know, if you uh, are on a budget, just get yourself a couple brushes. I did the oval wash and a little fine tip brush. But these are pretty good price. This is the Zen Art brush and they have a little set of five, which are really cute. And, and so I don't use the uh, square brush very much because I was always painting, doing all my details with a round brush. But I will say, since I got this one, I started using it. You know what? Square brushes are friggin' awesome <laughs> because you can get some really nice sharp lines. And I used to struggle with houses and buildings and things like that. With this nice straight edge, it's so much easier. So if you're just starting out, I'm going to recommend that you get yourself a, a flat wash brush as well. Just a little one, you know, because you can do your straight lines and not struggle quite as much as what I did when I first started. Now, remember, I'm I'm a big seascape artist, so, you know, most of the, land, the landscapes and seascapes, you can easily get away with a couple of brushes. But if you're starting to do buildings and you want straight lines, things like that, um, this is a great little brush to, to pick up. Okay, so I just, um, I don't even know what he's on. I guess he's on some kind of stick or branch. So I'm just doing a couple different colors in here with this one. Again, look at that nice little line I can get with that. I mean, I'm still a little squiggly, but um, the branch is not perfectly straight anyway. So I, you'll notice I'm going to dry this actually in between most of these steps, but I'm not going to put that in the video. Um, but because I am doing a lot of detail work and stuff, I'm going to make sure those are dry before I go into the next step, which I think is going to be the background. And we've just got the basics in there. I could have left that all, I could have masked that whole thing out if I wanted to, but it's really hard to do with all of those little fine hairs. So just easier to paint it in and then go back and, and, um, add the background to it. So I decided I wanted to darken that a little bit more before I... Go ahead and do that. And that black line is just a little bit too sharp. So just adding a little water to that. And then we'll get his little feet in here. Mine's well, because we're not going to um, cover that up with the background anyway. So I was talking about seascapes. If you want to learn seascapes from beginning to end and you're brand new to watercolor, we go over like color mixing we go over brushes we go over paper we go over watercolor we do all the basics at the beginning of it so it's great for beginners and then we're going to go into some real basic trees rocks water cloud skies um, colored skies and then we're it's going to be a six week course and by the end of it we're doing some pretty detailed paintings so even if you are, you know, you've been working with watercolors before, you might still enjoy it. You could just kind of skip over the, the basic stuff or do it as a refresher. Um, but that one starting up, I did the spring one, which was really, really fun. And it was my first time doing a six week course online. So, oh my gosh, I had such a blast. So each week we actually met up on Zoom and we got to talk about their projects. We got to do a question and answer. Everybody got to meet. So it was really fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing it again this fall. Actually, it's going to start uh, September 25th with a live welcome. So if you haven't yet signed up, I'll leave you the information down below and you can check out the, the page there and see if it's something that might interest you. We have a lot of, a lot of, a lot of fun and we have a lot of painting projects in there. Um, all right. So I'm going to detail him a little bit more, giving him some more spots and some lines, just having fun with them. Not perfect. I mean, I'm not looking um, at the picture per se. I'm just kind of glancing over. So it's not exact at all. But we just want a few more colors in there. I noticed he had some little dots and stuff and he was pretty dark along the top. But my favorite part is all that fuzzy fur. <laughs> and all I did was just go over that with like a little bit of yellow. Just so you could see it. It wasn't, um, wasn't popping out before that because you had the masking on white paper so you couldn't tell so now you get a little bit better visual of what he looks like with his fuzzies 
All right, now I'm gonna just wet the rest of this paper all around, kind of coming up, kissing the little stem here and try not to cover up too much of where I filled in his little hairs. But again, we've got a lot of masking in there. So once it gets pulled off, you're not gonna see a lot of that anyway. So I'm gonna start with just a little bit of bright yellow. Again, I want that really kind of muted look to the background. Just some greens and some yellow, maybe a little bit of blue, a little bit of purple, just to kind of tie in the stem. I also wanted to mention as some of my fans here that gave me a thanks and clicked that little button. It's a super thanks and bought me a couple cups of coffee this week. So thank you so much. So popping in a little bit of green. And again, I'm using that Zen Art brush. This time I'm using a little bit larger flat wash one. Again, just covers a little bit more area. Since I'm using um, a half sheet here of the hot press paper. And hot press, again, is a little bit smoother if you haven't used hot press before. I did a couple of flower demos on hot press paper. I never use hot press paper. I got this one um, pad of it and um, I've had it for quite a long time. <laughs> it's great for like portraits and things like that. Um, but it actually worked out okay with this particular one because hot press is very smooth and it's not as easy to do many um, glazes. A lot of times people will use that for like pen and ink, a lot of detailed type things, type paintings. Great for flowers if you're really getting into all of the little minute petals. So I'm adding a little bit of purple to the green. Again, I want to be a little bit darker. Again, I'm just playing with this. There's no right or wrong with this. Is I'm not even thinking really about my strokes as I'm doing it. I'm just adding in color and trying to get, you know, like, like the illusion of having some kind of blades of grass or leaves. I'm going to darken this side up a little bit more over here, too. Again, you can see how soft it is because there's no texture to this paper whatsoever. Adding a little bit of darker values in there. We'll see how this dries. I'm trying to be careful around the um, stems. So I did one wash, so it dried pretty light. So I actually am re-wetting it again and I'm gonna go a little bit darker. Again, just some like little illusion of some sticks or some branches back in here. A little bit of that purple. And I could have left it the way it was, but in the original photograph it was a little bit darker. And it just makes him, I think, pop out a little bit more so he doesn't blend in quite as much. And a little blue, a little purple, kind of a grayish tint. I don't know. This is part of the um, painting that it's just fun. You don't have any preconceived ideas I'm just I'm playing at this point which is really what painting should be like most of the time so it's so stressful kind of just a hodgepodge of color isn't it Ooh, that purple's really bright I'm going to soften those branches a little bit. Just go a little bit darker. Again, just kind of little blades of grass, maybe branches. I don't know. Just some texture in here. You can also see where my brush was a little bit dry and it split, which kind of looks neat. <laughs> oh, I'm going to cover that up a little bit more green. Greeny purple again. Just trying to get a little bit darker with it. I think that's going to pop him out because he's he's the star. He should be the star. He should be a little bit brighter in there. A little bit more green, a little bit more purple. Ooh, 
that's nice and dark. Again, remember with watercolor though, it always dries much brighter or lighter, not brighter, lighter than what you see on the paper. All right, let's dry that. And this is what we got. So we're going to brighten him up a little bit more because now he seems a little dull. So I'm going to add a little bit of blue to him. See if we can brighten him up. And I don't know if I'm completely happy with the background, to be honest with you. So I think I'm going to do a little bit of splattering in here. A little bit of white gouache. Again, just to, to break it up a little bit. You can always splatter, splatter. It looks good on everything. <laughs> Just love a little splatter. And we'll do a little bit of black splattering. He's got little dots on him anyway. And just creating a little bit more texture in here. And since I have that darker value on here, he actually has a lot of really deep colors along the back where it's more of a sh shadow area. And he has little dots throughout him. And at this point, I still have that masking fluid on there. So a lot of this is not going to show up once I remove the masking. Because remember, I'm painting over the masking in some of these areas. So I'm giving him some little dots. And his little legs in here. We'll see how much of this actually shows up once we remove the masking. And then we'll lighten this up a little bit. Just adding a little bit of gouache on top. Just give a little highlight in here. Once I got the dark background on there, it kind of blended in a little bit too much, so I had to pop it back out. Let's add a little red to that. There we go. Now it's got a, another shade in there, so now it stands out a little bit more. Okay, dried, and now I'm going to remove the masking, and let's see what we've got. I'm probably going to have to do a, just a few little details on top of it, because I've got a lot of white in there, as you can see. It looks quite fuzzy. So we're going to soften some of that a little bit more because he's more of that um, yellowy orange look to, to the fur that's on him or the fuzz or the hairs. Do you guys have brown tail moths where you're at? Leave me a comment down below. <laughs> Let me know if you have brown tail moths. They are fuzzy like this, but they have two little black dots on the back of them. Or, or is it white dots? Black or white? I can't remember. But the hairs on them are really, really itchy. People can breathe them into their lungs and everything. It's It's been really bad here in Maine in the past few years. We didn't get them up here in the Bangor area, though, this year. That, well, I'm not in Bangor. I guess Bangor got it. But where I'm at outside of the city, um, we didn't get it bad this year at all. And I'm allergic to everything. <laughs> so if we had them, I'd know it because I'm always outside. I didn't see any either. We had other caterpillars, but. I didn't see any of the brown tail moth ones. All right, so I'm just adding a little bit of white gouache. Again, just, um, you know, back and forth a little bit um, with the color just to make them pop. And I think we're about done here. This was really fun. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. It's uh, my creative process and work. Um, it's always super fun just to try new things. And um, you can see how cute he is. He's a little soft and fuzzy. So I hope you guys enjoyed him. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.